Hi there, uh, I thought I would go over Flame Painter 4 today. I bought it a few weeks ago, it was on sale. Uh, the people who make the Rebel digital painting program Escape Motions had a anniversary sale and they were selling all of the software for $10 each. So I bought Flame Painter. Uh, I saw my sister using it and I thought it looked cool so I bought it as well. Um, it's mainly for doing particle effects, uh, particle brushes, it's like a flame and special effects program. I suppose if if you were so inclined you could paint a whole picture using this software but I think mainly it's designed to add special effects to an existing picture or at least that's how I would probably go about it. Um, so it's got different brush engines, it's got a flame, ribbon, follow, liner, elastic and fuzzy. These liner elastic and fuzzy brushes are only a preview because you have to buy them separately. Uh, they must be slightly more advanced or I think they used to have a pro version of this software but the way they do it now is they sell the extra brushes as an add-on. So in effect this program is, is more like a demo. Uh, but since I only got it for $10 I that's fine and um, it's got quite a few brushes anyway in the ones I can use. And also it, you can customise them. Uh, I haven't quite figured out the interface yet but it's got the usual colour wheel and it's got different gradients you can use with the brushes. Uh, if we hover over these we can see what these icons do. So that's for I presume flipping picture, inverting I don't know what that means, maybe something to do with shifting colour, I'll have to look at the instructions. Uh, you've got your layers, you can add layers here with the plus add layer here and uh, even vector layers, um, export to Photoshop. Duplicate, merge and remove layers which is always useful. You can lock layers, you can lock the transparency, uh, change the opacity of the layer. So yeah that's it's quite, quite enough really to get going. Um, so the brushes are quite crazy looking, they're unpredictable, they, uh, I don't know the technology exactly that makes them but it's something about particle systems, so like some sort of particle physics thing. Um, and you can change the colours it uses by selecting different gradients. I think you can use just solid colours. Oh no, you can you can change the colours by doing this. Um, it's all very random. It's maybe you'd want to uh, create the a look of movement or something in a picture or uh, just maybe it could be a good starting point 
for just creative brainstorming just create some crazy shapes and then think what could I turn this into uh, maybe try different colours and see if that inspires you so I'll just go through the different brushes and hopefully we'll find some that are, are nice so this calligraphy brush it, it has a bit of a lag on it it's it might be good for doing very controlled work see it's a bit if you've ever heard of a program called lazy Mizumi this looks like it has the same sort of thing where it, it slows down the stroke so you can decide where you're going to go with it in a controlled way so that's that brush uh, this ah, I've got it on black See, if you have a black, a dark background, you need to choose a colour that's going to show up with that. And there, there is a bit of a lag on these brushes on my system, so they, they are quite intensive. There must be some calculations going on in the background. I'm not usually a fan of brushes like that, uh, but yeah, I like to have brushes that are fast and responsive that's that's what I'm looking for in in a digital painting program but you can't get away from that if 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 you want something crazy and random then this is probably a good program for you and maybe it'd be good for me because I sometimes you can get a bit stuck in the mud and, and be a bit of a control freak so maybe I should give it a go I suppose it'd be good for creating weird backgrounds or textures maybe you could make uh, textures for 3D models or just overlaying things um, just try different colours and go a bit mad. Um, that's uh, I don't know what what I'd use this one for. Probably it might be good for inspiring something. It looks a bit almost like something out of Alien sort of Geiger-esque doesn't it um, I think we need the gradients with this one it's it almost looks like a, a nautilus shell the way it's spiraling like that it's like a nice 3d effect so the pressure sensitivity affects it as well so if I don't press very hard or just once I just get a little thing like that or if I move about a lot I get something more like that it reminds me of fractals in a way um, it looks quite mathematical so if you're into art like that, maybe this program would be good. Um, this this is quite fun. You could have magic effects for your your fantasy characters or your fairies. Uh, oh, that this is nice. 
it is working quite these some of these brushes work faster than other ones this one is a nice responsive one but I, I do have quite a good graphics card and I have uh, I think it's oh, quite a lot of RAM it's probably using the graphics card more than the processor anyway we've got lots of brushes uh, good selection here lots of different variety of effects you can do and this is only one category so uh, quite good value really at least it was for ten dollars I would say it's probably worth the price they they asked for it I mean it's it's a good it's been around a long time now it's it's not crashed or anything uh, it's got all the features I would need for this we, um, yeah I'm not selling this really I, they, no one's asked me to talk about this or anything it's just that I have a blog talking about digital art and the software I use and that's sort of my thing it, it keeps me interested in in doing stuff and it it keeps me happy and uh, that's what I do so right I'll have a look at the ribbon brushes now my husband just came in and sort of interrupted me a bit but these are the ribbon brushes uh, you could use that for a like a flame sort of maybe a flamey sort of look you can also change the size oh oh no that's the size of the that's the zoom See, this is how we learn software. We we do it. Just do it. To be honest, if I need to read a manual to learn software, I probably won't use it that often. But I'd make an exception for 3D software, things like that. But for something like this, I want it to be easy to use when I start because it's it's supposed to be something to help being creative so if it's too hard or too technical then I just think what's the point I'd rather just uh, use a pencil and paper or something you know that's like the ultimate really for being creative you don't want to be bogged down in technical stuff and this one looks just like a it has a velocity thing on it so the faster I move my brush it, it goes crazy so it's it gives a random to it. I think all of these brushes create a random unpredictable effect and you can also use gradients with them you're not limited to just using colour even if they default to that or the other way around so this would be difficult this sort of effect would be difficult to create 
in a program like Krita. I, I don't believe it has. I could be wrong, but I don't think you can apply a gradient to the brush stroke like this does. Although I might be wrong. They, they are always updating things and improving that software, so never say never. Uh, I, it is a little bit annoying that it changes the colour of the brush when I change the brush, so it always defaults to black for instance, and I'll be honest, that's, that's a little bit annoying, so that's just something to bear in mind here. That's a nice basic brush. That's more of a swooshy brush brushy brush. Maybe that would be nice for doing some painty sort of effects. Oh, and this brush uses an image instead of a gradient or a colour. So I believe you, you can select different images for uh, I don't know whether it's all the brushes or particular ones, but you can change the image that it's using and you can even import your own images as well. So that could be good if you've got a library of uh, patterns and things. Different textures. You probably want something that is a repeatable texture so it's tileable but I don't know, it might, it might work fine for general images. Although it looks like these might be seamless. Uh, so yes, you can pick whether you want it to use a colour a gradient or an image and just go crazy with that so um, yes I'll have to think what can I do with this program uh, I'm sure my my sister she she fell in love with this, she even bought the extra brushes, so she might have a few more ideas than me about how she would go about using it. Uh, maybe I could talk to her about that in a podcast when we get around to talking to each other. Um, I'd like to talk to her about her approach to colouring in comics and the sort of software she likes to use. Uh, she uses, she still uses Photoshop and she also uses Clip Studio more than I do. Although I do own a license for Clip Studio Paint and it it is a very good program. I, I just found myself using Krita more and I haven't installed it yet. Maybe maybe I will. Because it is useful for using Photoshop brushes that I've got. Uh, since I don't have Photoshop. And I know some well I won't I won't go into other things about Clip Studio. Perhaps I will make a video about Clip Studio in the future.
So this um, we've got lots of different brushes. Some are more fractally than others. That that's uh, that's gorgeous. So the the overlapping creates a nice effect as well and perhaps it could be used as a starting point for a, a, an image maybe you'd be inspired to create an environment from this perhaps uh, like maybe a some sort of cave or um, space environment that this could be used for crazy space effects like in a, a light effect or maybe even a some crazy silk clothing on a character or something Uh, really it is it is all it just depends on your imagination and and how how uh, experimental and maybe you want to try a new thing that you might not have not be able to do in other software very easily this seems to be very much focused on this unpredictable sort of brush engine and it works very well and you're not limited to the size of the picture either you you can choose different sizes and you can create whatever size document you want obviously the, the bigger the document I would think that it would use more memory uh, resources on your computer so you have to be careful I believe you can also import images uh, yes you can import images you've done already so you could use that as a background and then, then add special effects to it on another layer uh, I won't go through everything here because this is more technical and I'm sure there's a there are online videos tutorials going through these things and the more in-depth features and there's probably some well I thought there might be an instruction manual in the program but I can't see one maybe, maybe it's, it could be this help ah here you go so you've got you've got a manual telling you all about the different tools and yes I, I'd probably say you should read this through and on any software you should always read the manual every now and then and you'll find things that you didn't know it could do or maybe it will remove some frustration about not being able to figure out the interface or what different things do so it's always good to have documentation so that's good there's also they've got a forum and I haven't been active on their forum I, I, I'm not really a forum person I I I tend to just work things out myself and keep to myself honestly this this whole uh, I know it's silly I've got a blog talking about digital art and I've been doing it for a long time now if, if you want to call since 2000 and 
to 16 a long time. It's not really, but I've been doing digital painting since 2004. And I, I wasn't very good when I started. Uh, might not be as good as a lot of people now. I look at some people and I think, oh my God, you know, it's, it's um, intimidating. But you just have to find something you enjoy and stick at it. And that's all I can say really. Because there'll always be someone better than you and that you don't want to get intimidated by that um, it's not a good attitude to have so that's I don't know that's why I stay off the internet most of the time and when I do go on it I end up depressing myself so So that's that's this program. Um, the follow brushes have some of the more flamey effects. That one's got a well, it's it's lightening it, so it's using a blending mode here, lighten. So you can set the blending mode for the individual brush. You can also set a different blending mode for the layer itself. So perhaps you want some weird color dodgy stuff going on. Uh, or Color burn. Anyway, it's it's quite flexible. You can do anything you want to do here. Yeah, these brushes I would probably use with a background picture or create them as a separate layer to overlay in another program. So perhaps you could, you'd want to create some light effects, uh, bokeh sort of um, glowy effects that you might want to overlay on something. You could do that with this. Just an idea. Uh, not that though, that's that's pretty bad now. Snowflakes. We've got Christmas coming up, so that might be nice. Uh, this would probably be useful for people who do well, anything really, but this is the sort of thing. There's a channel on uh, TV sometimes I watch it called um, Create and Craft. Uh, sometimes I, I just like to watch something that's not related to digital art and it gives me ideas for things. Um, so, crafters though, they are getting more involved with digital tools and this sort of thing would probably be right up their alley for creating uh, backgrounds and uh, just crazy effects. Maybe they want to create their own wrapping paper, something like that. Uh, oh, these brushes, they they must use some sort of image uh, stamp and they're randomizing it and you can see it's applying a gradient to it. 
I believe there are brushes a bit like this this in Krita. They they use random images and things. So that's not a new thing particularly, but these are quite nice. I don't I don't tend to use brushes like this, um, but this might be useful for quick concepts uh, where you, you don't want to paint every every single leaf and that is something I'm guilty of sometimes I spend hours painting individual leaves and rocks and things and I have had to learn the hard way that that although it might be impressive to people ultimately it destroys you and uh, it's just a waste of time so perhaps getting used to doing things in a different way might be good for your workflow and uh, so you can spend more time doing other things and not having to draw individual leaves and grass you don't you don't want to be doing things like that especially in your 40s it's oh you know your, your hands they they have a limited tolerance to things like this when as you get older uh, anyway that's too much information so Yep, I think we've gone through, oh, I could go through the other brushes, uh, but they're only in a, a demo mode. So it will have a watermark over. So yes, uh, there's some more brushes and they're probably the nicer brushes. That's why they're selling them, so. These these are the brushes that everyone wants, basically, I should think. Uh, yes. See, like, that's a nice quick effect there. Maybe good for crafters and things. Probably wouldn't want to uh, use it. You could create your own images and use this. So this one, I, th I think it's using that one. So it will use different ones if you change them. It obviously uses transparency for this one. That's that's quite a nice feature. So you could create a seamless pattern and, and use something like that to just create a lot of complexity fast. Yes, these use uh, images as well. That looks like uh, when you're playing music and it it goes up and down, that's what that reminds me of. doesn't it? Okay, so it only lets me draw on this preview layer for these demo brushes and every time I select another brush it it deletes it so there would be no way to use these brushes unless you paid for them 
so fair enough Anyway, I think this this video is uh, that's pretty much all I want to say really in this video. So thanks for watching and all the best. <laughs>